Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Thursday, August the 10th, 2023. Yesterday, I talked about the Charles Manson murders in the summer of 1969 and specifically the murder of Sharon Tate. And one of the commenters to my channel said that she couldn't watch the whole of the video. She certainly couldn't watch what I said about the Manson murders uh, because it was too sad. And I certainly understand that. Um, but I do take the view that when you're looking at the chart of someone like Charles Manson, you can learn um, a great deal because you're looking at um, exaggerated features of a chart. You know, Charles Manson was a Scorpio. You know, we have these stereotypes about Scorpios being very vindictive, having long memories, not forgiving. Uh, it's a stereotype. But Charles Manson really demonstrated that in an absolutely major way. Charles Manson also had a Sun-Venus conjunction. Now, I'm coming to the conclusion that the Sun-Venus conjunction is probably one of the worst aspects to have. And yes, he had the Sun-Venus conjunction. So what the Sun-Venus conjunction is about is about the, se the, the feminine getting combusted, uh, seriously damaged by the Sun because the Venus is, Venus is conjunct the Sun. Here we have Charles Manson who had fantasies about being a super successful pimp. He pimped out some of the female members of his um, family. And, of course, he was responsible for, the, for killing um, the ultimate archetypal Venus in the form of, you know, Sharon Tate. Um, you know, she was, um, you know, considered to be this incredibly sort of attractive, successful actress, um, and he was responsible for killing her. And that, that really symbolizes Sun conjunct Venus uh, on a collective level, I suppose. Um, so not everyone with Sun Venus conjunction, a, a Sun Venus conjunction is going to behave like that. But it's just a reminder about the way thing, these things, the way these things can work. And so in general, if you're a man with Sun Venus conjunction, you do have to be careful how you treat women because there's a danger that um, you know you don't under, you don't fully respect them, or you undermine them. Or if you're a woman with Sun Venus conjunction, you there's a danger that you may be um, yourself mistreated. So women with Sun Venus conjunctions do have to be aware of that. And so by looking at Charles Manson's chart, we can get some ideas um, um, about how how astrology really works, um, because that's the advantage of an exaggeration, which in a way um, Charles Manson is. Um, another thing to point out is that um, astrologers traditionally are really into death. And um, maybe I'm just part of that tradition. Um, you know, Placid, the Placidus house system was developed by Placidus. And Placidus wrote his book, The Prima Mobile, where he talked about his calculations but he also talked about some of the some of the his some of the cases where he was able to successfully predict death. It was almost um, like um, predicting death. It was almost like a CV or like a resume. You know, almost like these astrologers was part of their resume. They would show all these deaths they they were able to predict. Um, another more more recent astrologer who did this was John Warsdale. He was working in the English county of Lincolnshire in the early 20th century. And he wrote, um, he wrote up his case book, um, all, all, you know, all his clients talking about them. And in every single case, bar one, I think, he showed how he had successfully predicted their deaths. And in one case, he actually, um, he actually managed to possibly cause someone to die. Um, talking about self-fulfilling prophecies, um, this woman visited this office, his office or wherever he worked. Um, she was young, early twenties. Um, she didn't really believe in astrology. She, I think, she was about to get married, but she was just flippant. She, 
She went to see him, just wanted to see what he had to say, visited him out of curiosity. And I'd always tell people, never visit an astrologer out of curiosity. Um, so she um, she went to see him, looked at her chart, and he, and he said to her, you're not going to get married. And she said, no, she's going to get married. And she, he said, no, you're not going to get married. Something terrible is going to happen. Um, and she um, went her merry way. Um, <laughs> obviously, she didn't, um, didn't believe him. She kind of mocked him. And then he did something quite extraordinary. He actually sent a messenger after him. He was so offended. He was so sure he was right. He was so arrogant that he wanted to, he sent a message a messenger to tell her, re you know, to remind her that something terrible was going to happen, connected with water. So what did she do? Well, I think she wanted to prove him wrong. So she promptly took a boat trip. And of course, we know what happened. She fell overboard and drowned. So um, that's astrologers and death. You know, we did it, you know, when I was studying astrology in the 1980s, the astrology teachers were all into... Um, most of them, were, you know, if there was a big event, like, uh, I don't know what sort of events were going on, you know, the Challenger disaster, you know, the astrology, you know, everyone, the whole class would want to look at the look at the chart. Um, if it was, let's say, there was um, um, a, the Herald of Free Enterprise, it was a ferry that sank in the North Sea or the English Channel, Dozens of people killed. And, you know, straight away, astrologers wanted to look at, wanted the time. When did it happen? When did it happen? Let's set up the chart. Let's find it. Um, or um, the King's Cross fire. Um, that was a ghastly thing. You know, there was this garbage was set on fire. Um, maybe a, I think it was a cigarette end had gone and the whole thing went up. And the, the escalator was like a tunnel of flames. D again, dozens of people killed. But astrologers wanted to know when it happened they wanted to set up the chart for it you know all astrologers i think you know that's what astrologers wanted to do um so yes yeah, so i am part of this long tradition i think of um astrologers who are concerned about death and, and it's maybe a bit of an obsession now maybe things have changed maybe younger astrologers are not so concerned about death maybe they're more into fuzzy stuff and um you know um, just talking about good vibes and um, good karma and how wonderful tomorrow is going to be. Um, maybe. So maybe things have changed. Um, I don't know. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to look at the astrology for today. And today is um, Thursday, August the 10th, 2023. So this is the chart. We can see that the moon is in Gemini. Uh, that's good. Uh, it's good for talking. It's good for communicating. Um, the kind of communication that isn't very deep. It's not. It's not really deep emotional communication. It's just words. Words come out of our mouth. And this moon in Gemini is square Mercury in Virgo. That means we do have to be careful that we don't talk too much. Talk just garbage. You know, there's a danger. But we just talk for the sake of it. Um, and in the process, we are not going to get very far. Just talking for the sake of talking is a waste of time and it could just offend people and make us look stupid. So be careful what we talk about and concentrate not on Moon in Gemini, Square, Mercury in Virgo, but try to focus on the fact that Mars in Virgo is trine Jupiter in Taurus. Sorry, Mercury in Virgo is trine Jupiter in Taurus. Mercury, trine Jupiter. That's also about communication, but it's in Earth signs. Mercury in Virgo, Jupiter in Taurus. Communicating without using so many words. Focusing on things that, imp that are important rather than trivialities. Uh, you know, maybe we need to talk about money. Uh, if we're going into work or from a business and career perspective, talk about business plans. Be real. Keep it real. Don't drift off on fantasies. Don't don't um, talk about stuff that isn't relevant. So if we keep it relevant, then it can be a great day and we can have some really, um, really useful conversations where we don't have to use um, 
too many words. So as far as my forecast for the 12 signs are concerned, um, here goes. These are my forecasts for today, which is Thursday, August the 10th, 2023. Aries, you've got a lot to say, or at least you think you have. But to be honest, you could probably save it for later. Indeed, you might say the wrong thing at the wrong time. On the plus side, you have a good understanding of your financial situation, and once you get to grips with the details, you can take firm action to boost your income. Taurus, you've been benefiting from a series of aspects involving the signs Taurus and Virgo, and today things come together once more. Mercury in Virgo makes a trine aspect to Jupiter in Taurus, and you have the chance to express your personality and your vision for the future in a way that is impressive and realistic. Yes, it really can happen. Gemini. It should be a good day for Geminis, provided you handle things in the right way. Avoid the temptation to be impulsive, particularly on a verbal level. Instead, work on what's important and only reveal your hand when you are good and ready. If you have a dream or an inspiration, it can herald a new and fortunate cycle of events. Cancer. Cancerians often work on an unconscious level, with the source of their words and actions being emotional rather than logical. And today, something might slip out which you hadn't planned on. Someone might be offended and you might be embarrassed, but at least everyone knows the truth. Besides, you can never fall out with your true friends. Leo. Mercury continues moving through the financial sector of your solar chart, where it makes a fantastic aspect to Jupiter. You'll be very focused on money and there are ways of improving your finances. You just have to concentrate on what matters and not allow friends and family to distract you. And once you put in the effort, good fortune does the rest. Virgo. You're on great form at the moment and you'll be very good at collecting your ideas. But you must resist the temptation to be crit critical. Somehow the words won't come out right and you could cause needless offence. Yet with Mercury making a fortunate aspect to Jupiter, you can make progress in new areas, provided you don't ask too many questions. Libra. You're ready to move on to something else. Whatever you're involved in has become boring and you might feel that there's no point in hanging around. But before you move on to the next phase, whatever that might be, there is some work to be done. And that means finishing the task in hand. Only then can you expand to the next level. Scorpio. There's no need to take the initiative. Watch what other people are doing and learn from their mistakes. Later, when the conditions have changed, you'll find it easier to show leadership. But as far as relationships are concerned, it should be easy to get your message across. So if you want to get closer to someone, then now might be your chance. Sagittarius. Relationships continue to be important, but you need to create the right boundaries. Some areas of your life should be out of bounds to your partner. They don't understand and they don't have the right level of sympathy. But once that's sorted out, a trine aspect between Mercury and Jupiter brings the possibility of romantic harmony. Capricorn, you're trying to finish off some last minute work, perhaps of a detailed nature, but there are interruptions and you'll have to make it clear that you mustn't be disturbed. And once you hit the right tempo, you'll be very pleased with the results and this will encourage you to concentrate even harder. Aquarius, there are two things vying for your attention and it may feel that you have to make an either or choice. However, there's no reason why you can't have the best of both worlds if you're able to manage your time properly. And the key to today's success may be cutting back on your social life. Pisces. It's a day for bringing everything together in terms of your personal and professional life. Also relationships. You can be optimistic and purposeful 
and your expectation of a positive response is likely to be fulfilled. And there's something about you that's very likeable, which allows you to attract new people into your sphere of influence. So now I'm going to move to the I Ching. So as always, I threw three coins in the air. I asked the question, what is Thursday going to be like? for visitors to my YouTube channel. So the first hexagram I got was revolution. So that revolution relates to some aspect of your life which needs to change. I mean, change quite dramatically. It's not saying your whole life has to change, just some part of your life has to change. Um, so look around, consider what it is. And the I Ching actually talks about a change of government. Now, I don't mean that literally, but think about all the authority structures you're involved in, whether that's informal structures at home, maybe, or among your, amongst your friends, maybe at work. Um, so those structures need to be looked at again, and maybe they need to be changed. But whatever change you're, you're making, it's the right thing to do. Um, it has to happen. It's, it's good. It's like the molting of skin. It has to happen every now and then. The old skin has to be removed. You need to move out, uh, move out of that old skin and move into the new world and um, make that change. Um, and maybe, yeah, other people need to change as well if they're getting in our way, if they're um, pushing us around. Maybe there need to be changes of government, um, though maybe not real government, but literal government, but just changes in authority structures. Now, there is a problem because this hexagram revolution, it does move, um, fourth line moves, and it moves to after completion. Now, this is a bit weird because after completion, generally speaking, is not a particularly fortunate hexagram. It suggests that the best of things is over. And so it, it kind of suggests that, um, yeah, we make our revolution and then, then what? Chaos, potentially. Um, so, the I Ching, the I Ching is, there's a contradiction here. It's telling us to make this big change, but it's also warning us that as a result of this big change, there may be chaos. So what do we do? It means that when we make this change, when we, when we find this thing that needs to be changed, we need to, be, we need to manage this change. It might be the right thing to do, but the right thing can, to do could turn out uh, to be a real disaster if we don't manage it, um, manage it correctly. So that's all I'm going to say about the I Ching. Now, um, normally I talk about a, um, a topic, but today I'm not going to do that. I suppose I talked about death to begin with. I'm going to try to come up with um, um, another video later in the day. Um, I've got some ideas, um, but um, We'll see what I, what, I, what I come up with. Also, I'm considering a slight change of format. I'm wondering, maybe I should put out two videos a day. I should have a video like this, where I just focus on what's happening today, um, and then have another video um, about you know, whatever I'm interested in, whether it's, um, um, I don't know, what's happening in um, Joe Biden's life, um, whether Mike Pence has any chance of being president or going back to a past event like like um, the Manson murders or something like that. So I'm considering making that change. I don't know what you think. Or should I just put everything in one video? I really don't know. Um, that's um, something I'm trying to work out. Anyway, I will talk to you tomorrow.